Hi, this is Keith Schneider, CEO of MarketGauge.com, and this is September 22nd, 2013 edition of Market Outlook. Don't forget to sign up for this free newsletter and video report, and you'll get this free every week. So, quite an interesting week, a surprise move by the Fed not to taper, um, although, of course, economic conditions were not that great, so... For those really watching the economy, um, not surprising for those listening to the rhetoric out there and, of course, expecting some moderation by the Fed uh, on an overall basis, um, they were disappointed. But let's take a look at what the market did, how it's reacted. Um, we have uh, the debt ceiling dance now uh, on Capitol Hill um, as they play around and play political football. Uh, of course, it costs the U.S. taxpayers about $20 billion, uh, as estimated uh, in 2011. And, of course, we also received the debt downgrade. So we're going to cover today uh, the uh, overall market, the spiders, uh, volatility, the market internals, uh, bonds, and gold. So taking a look, let's look at the short-term technical pattern here a little bit ominous. First thing I want to point out is that the spike in volume on the news uh, that the Fed was not going to taper caused a huge spike. Those spikes are really great if they follow through, but this huge spike occurred on all-time new highs. When we talk about the spike in volume, it literally was well over double the normal volume. Our threshold for critical turning points, if it turns that way, or obviously continued momentum. In this particular case, what we have here are two days um, since the blow-off high, um, and you've closed in the bottom 25% for the last couple of days, actually closing below where they uh, w where the market took off from. So this is in itself a blow-off or a slingshot type pattern. Um, the excessive volume to the upside and that uh, action over the last couple days is not a positive result here. Um, in addition, you can see our very short-term RSI definitely hit overbought readings. Obviously, it's working off that. But what I've done here is I've also put in another relative strength indicator here um, over the last 14 days, and that has certainly been overbought as well. So when you get a very short-term RSI as well as a longer-term RSI, both corresponding, that's telling you that not only is the two-week momentum overbought, but also the two-day. So that is um, all confirming a peak top here that you definitely want to watch. Now, listen, for the bulls, you can certainly say that the phase is intact. You should have some really massive support. However, I would be extra cautious here if the market takes out the lows from the gap that was created early last week. So if we can get under this 170 level or so, and also take out that 10-day moving average, you can say that everyone who was smart enough to anticipate the Fed was not, rally, was not going to taper um, is now actually, if they didn't get out here, would be trapped. So this would be uh, a potential trap for any fresh entry bulls here, and we definitely want to keep an eye on that. Considering the blow-off type volume, the uh, price momentum out of control, and clearly fundamental values in the market, according to two market masters, Carl Icahn and Buffett, the market is clearly uh, fully valued here. Um, <clears throat> taking a look at volatility, um, you can see we're still trading at the lower end of the Bollinger Bands. Let's go to the cash value, VI x dot x in the volatility and you can see we have not actually 
cross down under the lower Bollinger Bands. So you can say the overall sentiment is positive. It's not super excessive. Um, otherwise, we'd be at the lower end of the uh, volatility bands. But on an absolute basis, relative to that market top, you could say that the uh, VIX here is certainly trading at the lower end of the spectrum. And look, going back uh, on the weekly charts, um, you know, several years now, you can see we're really, really trading at the lower end, flirting with the lower ends of its trading range down around this uh, 13 level. So um, on an absolute basis, uh, volatility is pretty damn cheap. Um, and the uh, although it is not excessive on the short-term sentiment. So positive uh, outlook over there. Of course, if you're a contrarian and you look at the uh, overall uh, technicals in the market um, and playing that short term may afford you to buy on an absolute basis uh, low volatility um, uh, play um, that of course any uh, further weakness in the market would put this uh, volatility index back over the 200 day moving average and more into a uh, negative or more pessimistic uh, bearish readings for the market. Let's take a look at some of the market internals. Um, also, pretty good frothiness. If you recall, um, we had mentioned that um, even though the, uh, the McClellan oscillator was sitting uh, just above uh, the, um, the 200 uh, level here, uh, it, it, it basically, excuse me, this is the, um, yeah, it's, it's the, we have this demarked at the uh, 150 level. Uh, and you can see we turn down. This is sort of the critical level. Uh, you know, it starts getting pretty rich or though can get a lot richer. And what we try to do is look for a turn down at, you know, relatively high readings to get a negative reading. So looking out over the next several weeks, we've certainly crossed um, from high readings back down. This is clearly a sell signal um, of one to three weeks in duration. Now, also interesting to note, that the up-down volume, volume is definitely starting to come in on the downside. And in fact, we were at, you know, bullish and pretty rich readings, which obviously can continue for a period of time. But we want to be cautious as when it turns down. And the up-down ratio at 60% um, uh, uh, was crossed. That is a sell signal. So um, on a 10-day basis, our shorter term indicator, half of them, we like to look at advanced declines as well. That is still running rich. It's still The overall breadth is still positive. If this starts to turn down uh, early next week, you're sort of getting a convergence of our intermediate term advanced decline, up down volume, as well as our shorter outlook. And those are where the most powerful signals occur. So clearly uh, more of a negative bent uh, on on the overall market internals and we're looking for this advanced decline to really confirm uh, the uh, short-term signals the 10-day advanced decline which is good for the next couple of days to possibly a week and a half or so now um, of interest is the bonds so let's take a look at TLTs these are the 20-year bonds you can see 20-year bonds, this is the 80-month moving average. And you can see every time it's touched this 80-month moving average over the last several months, um, we have bounced off of it. Now, looking at the daily chart in conjunction with this longer-term monthly chart, and this is the really super long-term chart here of bonds, 80 months you know, you're, you're looking at a very long-term trend. We take out this 80-month in the bonds um, to the downside. It'll be um, a fairly significant event. Um, 
However, let's take a look at what the uh, shorter term is showing us here, which is on the daily chart. So what you have off of this monthly, um, the, the monthly charts is a potential double or a compound bottom here with a slingshot low um, and actually two slingshot lows uh, were put in here uh, forming this compound bottom. Now what it hasn't done, it hasn't taken out this channel, the sloping 50-day moving average where um, after the Fed announced it came right up to it and paused. So you got a couple, you got an inside day, sort of a pause day or what I call a short fuse there and now we've got to watch which way this breaks. That's going to give you a big clue about what's going to happen to the overall market. Uh, if the markets, um, if, if the bonds continue um, to move sideways to down, obviously that type of pressure would not really be good for stocks at all. On the other hand, um, if we can rally above this uh, 105 level, this compound bottom um, and this trend line and the 50-day moving average would be taken out, also confirm, confirming this potential bottom. So we're going to let the market tell us what to do, but we know the key reference points and how the market should react, uh, especially the, you know, the S&P indices um, based on where interest rates are heading. So you're certainly at a critical long-term spot right here in bonds. And um, the markets are going to move pretty uh, rapidly from these levels here. These are not stable prices. Okay, one other last thing. Let's look at gold. Here we have um, a daily chart on gold. And you can see we were talking about the market last week being in an oversold condition based on the very short-term RSI. Well, we sort of drifted lower and then exploded higher. However, with the uh, sell-off in stocks and the prospect that the Fed might actually raise rates in October or cut tapering um, weighed heavy on gold and it corrected just about 50% of its move. So now we're back under the 50-day moving average, back into a bear phase. You're in a bull phase for uh, uh, two days uh, after the close on um, Thursday and uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, pretty sharp sell-off on Friday, but the market is still holding this critical huge move here. So the way to play this is to definitely take this these two days, bracket it, uh, and follow the trend um, either up or down. The market's very fluid. Why? Because if you can take out the highs after the Fed uh, decision um, this week, uh, you would get a resumption. And also, see here the slope of the 50-day is pointing up, so the market would be... Um, resuming its uh, recovery phase if we can get above that high, which is about 130, 133.50 or so. So that's a critical level, and around 125.75 is also a critical level as well. Let me, let me get that exact here, excuse me. Yeah, that's um, under about 124.75. That's also a critical level. That would mean that more pressure on gold through higher rates. So I would expect this type of activity to occur if the TLTs break down, create new lows. This would definitely put pressure on gold and cause it to probably fall through, test the recent lows at uh, 115 and potentially account back down to 1,000. So very, very uh, interesting pivotal points in the market. You got lots of uh, uh, detailed um, action points here. Hope this is helpful.
Again, remember to sign up for uh, this uh, video newsletter. You get it free every week. Uh, look forward to seeing you next week, and it's going to be interesting to see what plays out in the markets uh, going forward. Thanks, and bye for now.